It's awesome, cool. wasn't it? Like I just feel blessed money. to have been a part of it and to be able to generate it revenue during that time. But at the same time, be a part of that initial wave of of YouTubers that we would go to all these expos together. Yeah. We would travel and we would see each other at every single expo. And we were friends. Had to bring you back for this video, man. Scared me for a second there. So, <laughs> so we've been on YouTube. I started YouTube in 2011, this channel. Well, you've been around since. 2011, I started, I started doing like supplement reviews. Like I'd go to the Arnold and I'd get all exactly the bags supplements. And I'd be like, oh, I tried. You took one serving. You'd be like, oh, I love it. I hate it. You know, like that pretty much tasted my, good. Enough. My first review was on Oxy Elite Pro it wasn't from USP really? Labs. And that's when I started doing YouTube because it absolutely exploded. So it was a popular supplement. Is that what happened? Yeah, it was, people it was just, and, and, and yeah, and people were searching for it. And then I got like 80,000 views and I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> and then I started doing like review videos, like Gaspari stuff and uh, ON stuff. This is before I, all I had was way at the time. Right. And then, uh, people were like, Hey man, do you train? I'm like, yeah, like, do training videos. Okay, cool. Back in the day, you used to post a training video and get like 50,000 views yeah. in the first day. Now I post it, I get 500 views in the first What's day. It's so funny. Everybody's doing them. You know what I mean? And they've seen us do bench presses like 100 times. But there, if you go look up bench press, I've done it before just to see like what's out there. Like bench press. Like millions and millions of videos pop up of people that we've never even seen or heard of before. No, and, and know, also so. like back in the day, other than the twin muscle workout, the Hodge twins, no one was really doing training videos. So I do a video like a shitty video on a shitty camera before iPhones. Yeah. <laughs> and I get all kinds of views. It wouldn't be edited. It would just be like like takes and this and that. Now everything's so professional. And so what I want to kind of do is kind of reminisce on the, the, the fitness YouTube and how it's kind of progressed. Good or bad, here we are. So in the beginning, there was Louis Marco. Scooby, Scooby yeah. the Hodge twins, then I came along. And then the second phase, you had the Chris Joneses, the CT Fletchers. Lenses of Aesthetics. Yeah, a a LOA. And then after that, you had the people who came from them. So you had, um, you know, you're from CT's crew. You had Big Rob, you had Mike Rasheed, you had those guys. I was right inside that one. I was like the third wave because you were already on. Yeah. And by the time I was already starting to do the expos, you had already kind of established the Tiger Fitness brand. And uh, I had seen... <laughs> Scooby, I had seen, I didn't know that the Hodge twins were as big as they were. Like I told you that story yesterday. Like, yeah. I just thought that because they lived near me, I thought they were saying, hey, let's just all get together and film YouTube videos. I didn't know. I had no idea. They, They're like, they really started the fucking thing. You know? Yeah, like, I mean, we, we started doing videos together in 2012. And because I lived in North Carolina, a short three hour drive. And we go up to Gold's Gym Watchtower, film on our phones, undercover, of course, because they didn't want us to film there. It was before people were at welcoming of YouTube because they didn't know the marketing power. Yeah. And um, we'd go do pizza. There's, we have a pizza eating. Like, we're just eating pizza. That's all we're doing. We're just eating pizza. We're, we're having a conversation eating pizza. It's got like 400,000 views. You know, and then it was like, then I started competing a little bit more. And I did the pro card thing. And, you know, so for me, and then the channel progressed as we kind of, you know, we developed as human beings. So my channel's not the same as it was. Then, and I think a lot of reasons why I've so, and I never bought subscribers. I don't know about you. I'm pretty sure you didn't. Yeah. I wouldn't even know how, I, I think I get those emails from those random like Indian companies. So I didn't get them for YouTube. I got them for Instagram. Yeah, yeah. But, but I think side, they're the same guys. They all of a sudden, one time I put up this picture and it got like 4,000 likes in two minutes. Oh, wow. And wow. I was like, wow. That, it was like oh, The Undertaker, right? And I'm like, well, everybody just loves The Undertaker. Obviously. Who doesn't love The Undertaker? And then I got a DM like later on that day and they were like, hey, look what we did for you. And I'm like, what? I realized that the company had dropped a bunch of likes on it. <clears throat> they were trying to sell you on it. So I'm like, fuck, to keep integrity, I got to go take that post down because I can't leave it up. Yeah. So I took it down and then fucking wrote a post about why I took it down and then reposted it again just to get rid of that shit. So, so yeah. I get accused of buying subscribers because my likes or my, my views don't match my subscribers. Here's my theory. A lot of my subscribers came before 2015. Yeah. And a lot of these guys are now in their 30s, but they didn't cancel their YouTube account. Yep. So I'm subscribed to a lot of channels I don't even know about anymore. I don't even know if they exist. So what happens is these guys aren't on YouTube. They didn't click on notification bell. And they're busy like working jobs and raising families. So their, their thing back in the day was, hey, I'm going to watch Mark Lobliner make gains. And then between 2015 and 2021, they had some fucking kids. They have a wife. They have a job. And they're like... I don't want to watch Mark Lobliner. They don't even remember who I am. Or they'll see me at Walmart. They'll be like, dude, I used to watch your videos when I was in high school. 
I get that all the yeah, time. That makes me feel old as fuck. I mean, we had that today. And at the gym, remember? Dude came at the gym. He's like, man, I I've been watching you guys since I was like in high school. He's like thirty. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I feel old as fuck right now. Like, you're not we doing are. any favors by telling me I've been watching you since I was a kid. When they say that, I'm like, fuck. So the the evolution of YouTube at the beginning, we used to actually. It was kind of like a community. And for me, like, we used to almost start drama. Like, Ogus and Jones had the greatest fucking orchestrated <laughs> drama ever. When they were going to compete against each other, then Chris Jones quit the show. And, and what would happen is, we all were cool with it. Like, there wasn't real drama, except for the people who really were. Ian McCarthy was really vile. Ian McCarthy launched my channel. Really? Ian McCarthy <laughs> was what launched my channel. So... I was doing those little, you know, reviews and shit, and I was getting like a hundred yeah. views or whatever, right? And then, out of the blue, Dave Pulsanella, you know Dave Pulsanella? Yeah. Raising the bar? Him and Ian did a video where they sat down, and Dave was explaining his training theories and stuff, and Ian's like, well, you're doing it all wrong. And I'm like, he won the fucking North Americans. Like, look at Dave and look at him, and this kid was so cocky about how Dave knew nothing because this kid, Ian, knew some science. I was so fucking upset and pissed because Dave was a friend of mine that I made a video for the first time where Trashed I took my phone... I put it on top of the cat litter box, and I sat there, and I fucking shot my mouth off. And the next morning, I got up and had like 12,000 views. Wow. And I had no idea what I had done, because I didn't know people didn't like Ian. I had no idea. Ian did a whole video trashing me. I had no idea. And I'm pretty sure he was paid by someone I used to do business with, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> but anyway, so Ian and I actually ended up after a feud, because let's be real, like Ian could have been a smart guy, yeah. but there's a disconnect when someone's smart but and, and actually lifts, but doesn't look like they lift. And, and, and he's just talking shit, calling you stupid when you actually have games. Right. So Ian ended up, we ended up actually becoming friendly. We went and hung out, um, went and trained at an LA fitness in Georgia when I was there on business. Hmm. Um, and, and honestly, like he just became, a, he, he actually grew up and oh. he has a real job now and he's a good guy. But I mean, we all grow up. So Ian actually, that was the first YouTube complete shit talker who would just make <laughs> his living on blasting others. And of course we have the new guys who do that, right? But he was the OG fucking, um, uh, what do you call it? The, the, the nemesis or just was, the fucking was, shit poster. I met him at the Arnold and he was very different in person. And the first thing he said to me was like, do you still want to like, do you still want to crack my skull or something like he that? He says shit like <laughs> that. He's like, very what? socially awkward. I looked at him and like, he was, you know, he was a small guy wearing like a sports coat yeah. with like the patches on the elbows. <clears throat> And I just kind of looked at him and I was like, look, dude, <laughs> I was like, whatever happened, it's, it's over now. I'm looking at him going, we're not going to fight. Like, there's no point in fighting. No. But he was, you know, it was after that video, I was like, well, I can do that again. So I made a follow-up video. And again, it was like, I just let my feelings out and just shot my yeah. mouth off. And it was like 25,000. But now in the comment section, it was like, um, P-O-G, L-O. And there was these other yeah. people were putting stuff like tagging. Like Ogus and, and Chris Jones. They and wanted us to shit talk. And it was, it was, they were starting to come over because I guess they didn't like Ian either. They all had problems. Yeah. So it was like Legends of Aesthetics, Physiques of Greatness, <coughs> Muscle Twin Army, all that stuff. They all came to my yeah. page because of that one video. And that's what made it start growing from there. Well, Ian trashed all of us. He fucking went at all of us. I think his idea was to come out and be like, I'm smarter than all of these guys. I have more knowledge. I can produce better results. And then when nothing ever happened, he just disappeared. Yeah, he, he never made gains. And yeah. it was, he was one of those guys, like, and I trained with him. And again, I like the guy. But I'm going to just be real about his training. He's one of those guys like, okay, you want to really squeeze the muscle, full contraction? I'm like, just fucking lift the weight, <laughs> asshole. Just fucking lift the weight. And so, you know, Ian was one thing. Now, I, um, I think we can't go this video without mentioning somebody that we hold near and dear to our heart. Who I had no idea was still on YouTube, and he probably doesn't even know I'm still on YouTube, and that's Jason Blaha. Ah! <laughs> I was like, "Who's he talking about?" Yeah, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's mention him. Jason uh, used to do a video a week. I got about a video why a day. I suck. Oh yeah, he I got a video a day where he would fucking come after me like the most absurd. Shit he would I say <laughs> he would say things about my marriage, about infidel, about crazy shit. <laughs> And I'm like... He had no boundaries whatsoever. No he boundaries. Said. He'd go after your, your religion. He'd go after whatever it is. Call me Jew boy or shekels or whatever they used to call me. <laughs> Jewliner. He'd call you Jewliner. <laughs> yeah. Now that's a funny one. I like Jewliner. <laughs> you might actually hold on to that one, right? Like I might actually put it on the back of a football jersey. <laughs> and then you had Order 66, which oh, I've been a no. part of a few times. 
Jason Genova, who's still kicking around, right? Does he still do stuff on the internet? So this is what I understand. I met Jason before. Really nice kid. Honestly, Same, I had I mean, a good time meeting him. I met his not mom. Not a bad kid. Met the Misfits, you know, Big Lenny and all those guys, great guys. And um, I think Jason, what I, you know, from what I understand through the Misfits, because the Misfits kind of like talked about a little bit online, he kind of gets in some trouble where his <laughs> trolls went after like his uncle or something like that. And it really uh, actually was messing with his business. Well, he also sent a death threat through my house in one of his yeah. followers. And it really, really cost me a lot of money. And it really cost me a lot of stress. So I'm not a big fan of Jason because of he actually, he might not have known he was doing this, right? Jason, I don't want to make any accusations because I don't have, I don't care about anyone's medical history. It's not my business. But his mom and him told me to my face <clears throat> that he does have autism. Okay. Like they, we were together at the Olympia and they, they, we talked about it. So, so, so I can't like, do I like the kid? Look, man, I, I'm 40. I don't hate anybody. Well, I do hate some people, but not him. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, I think he just doesn't know what he's doing. And I think he causes problems. He likes the attention. And yeah. the more attention he gets, you know, that he likes it. But he doesn't understand what's happening to get that attention is, is fucking with other people's, mm -hmm. you know, lives. Then you have your Cali muscles. Cali took it to the next level. Oh, yeah. Your strength cartels. Um, those are all great guys. I'm friends with Cali. Um, Big Boy is the nicest, most respectful man I've ever met. Big boy's an absolute fucking freak of an athlete. I've not never really physically seen anybody that big. Yes. Yo, I love his new shit. Have you seen the new shit, the skateboarding? It's amazing. I love the skateboarding. Like I sent him a message like, dude, that to me is more impressive than I'm a huge, him lift everything. A huge fan. But to be able to do that. Fan. Shit, you know? I'm just thinking about who made the most impact. And I think the guy who spawned like you look at um rap, right? You look at Lil Wayne, he brought Drake, he brought Nikki, right? The the Lil Wayne of YouTube is C.T. Fletcher. Mm. He brought us Mike Rashid. He brought us Big he Rob. Mike, Mike Rashid brought us all these other guys. Like, C.T. was the launching pad for so many large YouTubers. And he brought us some really epic stuff. And C.T. is my business partner now. So I would say the most impactful man for YouTube fitness, based on sheer views of who he brought us, yeah. is gonna be C.T. Fletcher. And I still think that his videos are the most motivational videos that have ever graced YouTube's pages. Dude, just him saying, I command you to grow, motherfucker. Like, doing this. When he says like, it to you. It wasn't a bit. That's the thing. It's like, you know, the, the slogans, if you read them on a t-shirt, look like a bit. But if you actually heard CT in person screaming when he does his, ah, and he screams at the, the, the ceiling and stuff, you're like, holy Jerry, shit. Jerry, I'm, you know? I'm, I'm CT's business partner in Ambrosia and in Iron Addicts Gym. So you hear him scream a lot? <laughs> he doesn't, but his, you know, he is a very soft spoken The shit him, he you know? says is right there. So that's really CT. Yeah. He's a very motivational individual. And you look at where we're at now, I think there's a new class who've kind of taken the reins. You can't go without mentioning Greg Doucette. Um, more plates, more dates. More plates, more dates. And there's other guys that are actually like V Shred. And, and then you also got to mention um, Athlete X, yeah. who makes more money than God on YouTube. The guy's a millionaire just for doing videos. And the funny thing is, he probably weighs 155 pounds. Yeah, he's in great shape. I mean, Phenomenal great shape. shape yeah. And he's really smart. He does. thing is, it's different because... The movements he does, I don't think make a difference. Like if you turn your triceps out 20 degrees, I'm like, just fucking lift the weight. <laughs> but people are learning. And if they learn it with that kind of um, implicit just detail, they're going to be able to do at least a half ass rep. Right. So I'm all for um, what Athlean X brings to the table. I like Max tuning stuff too a lot. I really Chewing like to watch Max's stuff, uh, Christian Guzman's stuff. They do a lot of the higher production, like movie type things. Yes. Like theirs are like productions. So they Straight put, Project used to do that too. So maybe they put up like one video a week or something like that, but it takes them literally a week to film everything and edit it to make it look like it does. So yeah. I like that type of stuff too. Those oh my gosh. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that, so where, where's YouTube fitness going? There's just too much. I mean, there's, there's a lot out there. There's a lot going on. Why do I still do it? Because I like putting out information. Um, I like helping people. And even if 500 people watch it, that's 500 people. Is it as much as I used to get? No. Do I do it for the money? No. No. YouTube <laughs> takes. But YouTube doesn't take me that long. Other than like when Jerry's here, I might spend 15 minutes a day on YouTube. Now, I do go in and answer comments and this and that. But it's easy now because you have the studio app on your phone. Right. And you just go in there and it's all there and it's done. So for me, YouTube is giving back. It's getting information out there. 
but it's definitely the money in YouTube isn't what. So be like, man, I need to start a YouTube channel. Like, duh, it's not. It's gonna be tough to break in there. You got so many. That's why it's so flooded. What happened was. Back in the day, we were all making some decent money. I was making, I was making thousands of good money doing this, and people realized, like, well, shit, I, you know, I want to do that too because a lot of people they're like, well, I don't want to go to school, I want to, do yeah, that. I want to do this, and then all of a sudden it got flooded, and everybody was copying everybody other's sh shit. So now you have just like, a whole bunch of watered down, you know, channels that were just <clears throat> the same amount of shit that's going on. But I think yeah. a lot of them have kind of disappeared and fallen by the wayside because they realized it wasn't making money, you know, because you have to have at least it was a five thousand subscribers, yeah. ten thousand before you can even monetize the channel. So you have to grow that shit and spend money on the channel before you can even make money. Which on the I think is great. Which I like. And for me, yeah. I will always do YouTube because it's an outlet for me. I'm yes. very creative and I have ADD. I, I like, you know, I play music. And We're I like the same. Videos, but yeah. it's therapy for me. YouTube is my therapy. I actually go back and watch some of my older videos. And now it's really weird because like you can look throughout the years how different I've changed. How I look, my hair, my beard, my body, whatever. And I'll watch an old video that I forgot about of myself. And it's like, I'm not watching myself. Yeah. It's like I'm watching someone else. And I'm like, damn, that was a pretty good message. You know, like I, you know, I, I didn't realize that. So for me, it's like therapy to talk to the camera. It's therapy. When I hear the stuff back, I'm like, that was a good message. I got out to other yeah. people. And, you know, I get very personal with my videos too. Like I talk about things that are like, you know, the most personal things that somebody could talk about. And my thing also is by sharing that, putting it out there. All of my business is online and everybody knows it. So there's really no fuel for anybody to come at me and attack me with anything if I put it all out there. So for me, it never was about money. Like we just kind of fell into the money and we had no idea that you could even do that. I was just doing it you know? to uh, to talk to people yeah. and to sell product. I was like, what do you mean they got extra $3,000 a month in my bank account? That's crazy. It was you know? pretty it was fucking awesome, cool. wasn't it? Like, I just feel blessed money. to have been a part of it and to be able to generate a revenue during that time. But at the same time, be a part of that initial wave of of youtubers that we would go to all these expos together yeah. we would travel and we would see each other at every single expo and we were friends because like, you know why because we weren't competing for one plastic no. trophy everybody had their own niche and had their own followers yep. and like if i had a t-shirt out and mark had a t-shirt out and people watch both of us they would we'd buy my t-shirt and they'd buy his yeah, we, we had when we send each other the t-shirts yeah i do i still have a bunch of i still them. have the, I still <laughs> have the uh, august cake shirt <laughs> um it, it, it's it's ratty I, I wore it to bed a few, a few years but you know, where do I see YouTube going? Um, where it is now, I think it's gonna continue to evolve and you're gonna see new people come in. Like, you know, kind of like 10 years ago, we were the thing or five years ago or six years ago. Then you have the new school, the more plates, more dates, the Greg Doucette. Sooner or later, they're gonna age out too and they're gonna still be there if they choose to be, but it's not gonna be as big as it is. And then the new class comes in. It's, it's the 15 minutes of fame thing yeah. is real. And the reason we still do it, a lot of people have quit doing it. Um, does Ogus still put out videos? I, I haven't seen any. I don't even, I haven't even seen on Instagram or anything. But I still love it. You August know what's funny videos. is that new class of people, like more plates and more dates and Duchette, they talk about stuff that would have gotten us banned. Yeah. Like they talk, oh, and don't, don't get me wrong, we talked about steroids and stuff like that. But we did. Very over. video. Very one of my first favorite videos I put up was I was in Mexico when Lance Armstrong got busted. Yeah. And I made a video down in the pharmacy because he was busted for propionate suspension. And I was showing the different things that he was busted for. He would take it down. And at the same time, I was like, well, this is what other steroids are. I was explaining what this stuff was because it was 100% legal. I was in Mexico. I put it up. I go to the Olympia and I couldn't access my account. I was blocked for two weeks and I was told that it was harmful content. But then I see like Dave Palumbo put it up, the same fucking video, and it stays up. So I don't know like why we got fucking penalized, but like these new guys just fucking yeah. put up whatever and it's totally fine. I don't know. Yeah, I think um, I, as far as my future, I'm, I'm gonna do YouTube hopefully till the day I die. I, I don't, I'm not going anywhere. I don't care if two people watch it. YouTube, I'm gonna have at least two videos a week. Right now I'm at seven to ten videos a week because I love it. I love getting information, and I've also been posting pictures. I'm utilizing all their stories. I love the fact, not stories, but the shorts. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that YouTube has progressed and I actually get more views on my posts than I do my videos sometimes. Yeah. And it's a, it's an ability, like instead of having to upload a video, because my YouTube followers are different than my Instagram followers, are different than my Facebook followers, are different than my Twitter followers. So people follow me on YouTube might not have me following on the other accounts. So when I'm getting ready for a show or right now I have the 312 days out thing, um, dude, like I'm able to post pictures daily instead of a weekly video. So I'm able to interact with these motherfuckers on every day. YouTube or something like that now? Yeah, posts. I'll show it to you. Fuck up behind the times. Jerry, you're Shit. old. Um, I'm five and and old another old thing old. is, here's what I want to say, and you guys know I'm religious now, right? And if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> um, 
I would like to say one of the biggest blessings in my life is social media. Because of social media, I'm getting goose pimples. Like you can tell because I shave everything. Is through social media, I've met Jerry. You know, Jerry's one of my best friends now. I wouldn't have known this man. We wouldn't be hanging out. We wouldn't be able to, if I have problems, I wouldn't be able to email him for help. You know, I wouldn't know Chris Jones, who's my business partner. I wouldn't know Mike Rashid. Mike Rashid and I make tens of millions of dollars a year together. YouTube has enabled me to meet Mike Rashid, Sean Torbody, who I knew before internet. But our, dude, Ambrose is crushing it. We're an eight plus figure company. All because of YouTube, not because we did videos together, but because we met. Yeah. It's like an online fucking yeah. dating site. So utilize it for the connections, the Hodge twins, right? Like these guys, C.T. Fletcher, he's my business partner. Think about it. I'm business partners with Chris Jones. We make a lot of money together. I'm business partners with C.T. Fletcher. We own a gym and a company together. Mike Rashid, a gym and a company together. I mean, I can go on and on and on about the blessings that have come from YouTube. And this is great. Now Jerry and I are actually, we're partnering together. We're working together. Think about it. Make the connections. It's all right? weird because, <laughs> as you guys may not know, and I want to tell the story because I think yeah. giving credit where credit is due. When I started YouTube, I was making my videos on my phone, etc. And I didn't really know anybody that was on there. So all of a sudden, I see like it was like a I think it was from like the side you were in a desk or something had products on the desk. Yeah, yeah, the old school Burlington yeah. ones. And all of a sudden, I said, well, "What's this about?" So it had a bunch of views. And let me see. I click on it. And the first thing he does, he goes, boom. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I literally was like, I said, what the fuck? Is this? And, and I started and laughing, right? Because he didn't say it's not a game. That came afterwards at the end yeah. of the video. So I was like, what the fuck is the boom? So I watched the whole thing and I'm like, he's got to be doing like lines of cocaine on books back there to fucking yeah, keep his really energy right. up, right? Well, fast forward, I meet him in 2013 at the Olympia. I wasn't working with any companies or anything at that point. And uh, he was working with Isatoria. I walked up to him and we exchanged greetings and stuff like that. We talked about the BioGrow product. I used the BioGrow product. I contacted Mark to tell him what I thought about it. He got me in contact with Stephen Adderley, who was the owner of Isatori. And next thing you know, I'm doing expos. So I would have never actually got into the expos if I hadn't met Mark. But I would never have met Mark if I hadn't turned on YouTube one day and watch him scream fucking boom at the camera and scare the shit out of me. Yeah. So it's just like, it's a weird kind of like, you yeah. know, step by step so when awesome. you see how it evolved like that. It's, just, it's, a, it's a really badass thing and I'm blessed to be a part of it. YouTube is the best. It just is. And I will always have a place in my heart. But... With that said, man, we're here to stay. So if you don't like us, unsubscribe. <laughs> but if you do, if you if you happen to watch this video, you know I think we offer a lot. Um, we're older, so our perspective is different than the younger guys. You know, our perspective is old school. You know, um, we're old school, a hard training. You know, clean diet. You know, um, well, some of us train hard, but you know. <laughs> well, I mean, I wait five years. We'll see how it is. But yeah, so anything you guys need, Jerry? Where can they find you, man? At BioCTraining.com and all of my social media, BioCTraining, Jerry Ward. If you plug that in anywhere, it's going to pop up. Yeah, and uh, again, we really appreciate you guys watching. And hopefully you guys um, who haven't seen the prior videos we've done together understand that, you know, anything we had in the past is squashed. But look and, out for those other videos. If yeah. you haven't seen them, go look for them. Yeah, yeah. I'll, you know, I'll just I'll put a playlist. They're on a, oh, actually, playlist. this video is a part of a playlist called Jerry Ward. Oh, shit. And I already made the playlist, so I will put this in there. <laughs> so click on, I think there's some button for that. I, I don't know. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Follow Jerry. Thank you so much. I'm Mark Lobliner. That's not a game. It's not a game. What's up, Tiger Fitness crew? Jerry Ward here from GIFT Labs. And we're here today with, of course, Mark Lobliner to tell you guys about Delperol. So Delperol is an anti-anxiety product that I created because me, myself, I actually it was born with anxiety and I've lived with it my whole life. And I was always looking for something to take off that edge. So it just made my day a little bit better. I could just stay calmer. And uh, CBD worked really well for a while. Very expensive price tag. I knew there had to be a better option. That's where Delperol came in. So when I created Delperol, there are tons of different studies and information out there, which you guys can check yourself. An amazing product that helps you stay level. You can still get excited. You can still get upset, but it brings you back down to baseline very quick. And it also helps you just have an overall better sense of well-being throughout the entire day. So if you guys are looking for an anti-anxiety product, a well-being product, Delperol is the product for you guys. And I take it myself. I love it. And I've been taking it, of course. So, you know. <laughs> of course. <laughs>